Hello guys, welcome back. Uh, so I've renamed my channel from the Azure Guide to the Cloud A to Z. Uh, probably if you knew what is the reason and I wanted to explore more on the other part of public clouds uh, like AWS. So my learnings on AWS would be there and uh, this particular series will talk about uh, study with me uh, AWS services, uh, all of the AWS services in 10 minutes and then like we will have an overview of uh, the services, various services, okay. With that said, uh, let's uh, go and start this particular service, uh, uh, the AWS services and uh, I see there's, uh, there's a good documentation by Tutorials Dojo. Uh, they have a speciality like uh, they have a lot of content uh, like uh, uh, content and exam preparation guide for either if it's AWS cloud practitioner or architect associate or professional or any particular uh, any particular certifications you want on AWS it has a good content so that's what uh, I would like to thank for the content uh, thanks to Tutorials Dozo for this content and uh, I'll be reading through and this is sort of pe uh, for, for people who want to uh, you know study together and prepare together for the exam and uh, that's why I wanted to cover in, I will try to cover in 10 minutes uh, each of the services. Like we have a lot of services you can see, AWS Overview, Compute Services, these all services are there. We'll be taking up because they have segregated all of the useful inputs from the AWS document in here. And I would like to thank once again to this Dozo for, you know, keeping all this content which helps us for preparing for our exam, okay? and. Um, Let's go ahead and uh, pitch in and click on this particular AWS overview. Let's see on the AWS Global Infrastructure what it talks about. So AWS Global Infrastructure are sort of, you know, like uh, they have a lot of availability zones, geographic regions and world local region. So I will explain what exactly these components are. Okay. And uh, let's go ahead to with uh, knowing what is reason uh, like and there's another particular beautiful uh, diagram from AWS, which you can go is this particular infrastructure.aws. So uh, when you click on the home, uh, you will have uh, the list of all the locations which are available. Okay, where actually Amazon has spread over its data centers and you can see they are across all of the different places they have their own particular data centers. But on AWS, so there is one particular thing like uh, uh, the distinguish uh, between they have few of the technical terms to understand how they granular distributed uh, or categorize their particular services so so global infrastructure services are sort of services which are available uh, globally they are not uh, region uh, regional basis and uh, they are available for customers across all of the different parts of the earth i can say and if you say about the global infrastructure in chart so so global infrastructure if they are distributed into regions and um, the re regions are sort of uh, uh, like uh, distributed by a particular country like you you can take an example of uh, europe is itself is a is a reason it's a it's constituted of a lot of different countries in it okay and uh, so the regions will have availability zones okay and the availability zones are uh, sort of you know the infrastructure which which has if, if you want to do, go towards the description properly so here is this one so the, these are like proper a proper it says about uh, highly available fault tolerant and kind of scalability is uh, scalable solutions it gives on an availability zone and uh, it's consists of one or more data centers and if you see AWS Amazon services and we have region and inside the region we have availability zones so they are expected is at least three availability zones are there as of now on AWS or on Azure or anything and if you go towards availability zone you can see three data centers or uh, at least three availability zones are available on uh, in a particular region okay so the availability zones will have again data centers in it okay and uh, the data centers are like a uh, group of uh, uh, the all the storage compute nodes networking everything and with a high tight security and reliability if you want to know more about uh, these particular descriptions you actually can click on this and you will it will give you know exactly the 
brief detail about this particular services so right now we have 24 geographic regions on aws and uh, and each maintains at least 100 gigabits of uh, uh, connectivity and the interconnectivity with other particular uh, uh, DCs data centers in other regions as well so that is one good thing in case you're transferring data from one region to another data data center that what matters okay and if you go ahead on the availability zones so so it's ability of you know putting up your applications in database on a highly available infrastructure so that like uh, any uh, your particular content or the data read or write operations or your applications are available at any point of time uh, you can take an example of availability uh, uh, availability metric itself is like if you're trying to access google.com from your village uh, it should be accessible you should get a response for that so that is called as availability and availability zone is sort of hard ways where you are placing which are highly which gives you highly uh, available services and performance as well and uh, let's uh, go to the data centers data centers are nothing but a piece of hardware is put together it's uh, equivalent to uh, uh, two football stadiums uh, uh, a few data centers would be like that and yeah it's it's growing up big and i'm not sure how much bigger it would be right now and they are part of power, powered by a lot of different power supply and other thing and reliable power supply backup of everything is maintained and the coolant is maintained so that uh, it doesn't heat up the hardware inside them and there is something called as point of presence and point of presence are located very close to the customers so you don't actually uh, realize uh, like cdns and other particular services are there uh, cloudfront which actually brings your data or your images or videos nearby and catches nearby you like uh, if i'm in a city called Zadov and uh, if i'm trying to access the content for the first time so it will if the content is sitting somewhere in other region in like um, I'm in Europe region, uh, Europe region, and think that uh, the content is somewhere in US, okay? And then, like uh, the content would be first for the first time and would be cached in my point of presence. So in my like there are services like CloudFront and other particular services where it would bring that particular video or image and keep it here. So that second time, uh, same user or different user try to access, it would show up the cached content to him. So that's uh, the importance of point of presence. And let's go out of uh, to the regions, okay? Uh, so regions are specifically like, uh, as I said, they are uh, you know defined basing upon uh, the countries, like uh, segregation of countries like North Europe, North Europe or North America, or South America and segregation of all of the countries they have been segregated into region. Uh, it's for you know simplicity and then each particular region will be having uh, the availability zones and there are at least maintained to be three availability zones as of now uh, and the availability zones are like uh, uh, are like they uh, they have like you can take an example like if you have a certain region inside the region you have an availability zone so there is a gap between each availability zone uh, miles of gap because even if one particular availability zone or your data centers in the availability zones are flooded you have the other particular you know the availability zone which would be alive and uh, you can define your best practices and uh, push in your particular and push in your particular you know applications onto the other availability zone and going towards the local zones so local zones are the sort of i think it's only available in aws uh, not with other public vendors and uh, local zones are sort of extra complement uh, at a data center which has been added uh, in complement with the uh, availability zones because there are three availability zones but uh, local zones helps in boosting up few more uh, you know uh, data centers or hardware nearby wherever it's uh, wherever there are it companies or uh, there are user public or applications hosted and you have a huge demand in that particular metropolitan area then these actually the local zones would be set up by aws and then it uh, gives a flexibility of user to select apart from whatever the availability zones uh, we have or by now 77 availability zones whatever you have if they are exceeding but you don't you want to keep your content in that particular zone itself then uh, the local zone is your choice 
and as a set point of presence are the nearest cache or the nearest uh, the resource or the service area where AWS provides its all of the service to the customer like uh, via the CloudFront uh, or any of the other services. So that's what is point of presence. And the network is nothing but these all dotted lines which you are seeing uh, flowing across uh, beneath the sea and across the land, not by the hair. Uh, across the land everywhere to one particular data center one particular region one particular local zones to other and one particular zones to other zones uh, that is what is the complete network and um, how these are backed up is you know backed up by a whole lot of good customer hard uh, custom hardware which aws has built uh, with type with other partners and if you take an example of uh, this the silicon chip uh, which is a minus one which does all the computing is AWS has its own custom developed which you know supports a lot of computer network uh, uh, computations and they have the routers the virtual routers and uh, hardware routers are also there which are also very AWS specified or customized hardware built by the other vendors and uh, they have load balances the load balances are you know a sort of Mm, are the front facing I can say like uh, which load balances a customer uh, request and routes at a particular provision request of provisioning a cloud friend provisioning a in the EC2 instance onto compute or storage uh, servers and everything uh, by the load balances so they are they are the front facing one uh, services and they have like they have been there for across 20 years by the time you know AWS has set up its first server from 2006 and um, yeah and uh, it obviously you know uh, does a lot of things uh, internally and uh, you have something called as compute servers as well so the compute servers are nothing but the hardware which uh, which like th they are very specific and uh, designed specifically for aws workload customer workload and they are nitro system architecture they follow and uh, uh, that's what i can say and if you move towards storage service uh, there are few of the important things you know where uh, in every architect exam or any any AWS exam you get is uh, availability of this particular percentage of uh, this uh, the storage classes which we have okay uh, for different workloads so so it it will use its own custom hardware for this and uh, the SLAs for it, like availability SLAs for uh, it's around 100% for Amazon route 53 uh, and 99.9999% uh, for Amazon D Document DB, Amazon Dynamo DB, and uh, and 99.95% for Amazon EC2 instances, uh, Amazon RDS, Amazon EBS, Elastic Block Storage, and 99.9% .9 for the Amazon Cloud Front and S3 Storage. So if you want to know more about it and you want to know what is the service uh, health at any point of time, like if you're facing any issues with your AWS services, you can always visit to AWS uh, Service Health Port. Okay, and the benefits of all this particular use, um, you know, available architecture is like uh, it has the strongest security, no doubt. It's uh, obviously secure than any of the on-premise hardware or data center which we are trying to secure right now. Because it has a lot of biometrics, uh, a person can't enter directly. Even even AWS doesn't open this particular data center for customer visit as well. So that sort of uh, you know, the, and there are only very authorized personnel can enter into the data center. And uh, there's and a lot of encryptions and other thing data trust are also playing a role in there. And there's something called as highest availability and reliability. And uh, as I said, availability is a portion like uh, uh, where a page you're trying to access, it should send you a response. That is availability. And reliability is uh, uh, like how reliable that particular page, even if you're trying to access one lakh times, it provides the same content or same response. That is reliability. And uh, yes, with this particular bigger arc, the bigger, uh, you know, bigger magnificent infrastructure. Uh, the availability and reliability of hosting applications and these particular services are very available uh, because of its um, their global reach 
and the fastest performance because the network you can see you would have heard like uh, there's around 100 gigs uh, of uh, you know internet connectivity between each uh, data centers even if you're trying to host your service uh, ec2 instance in somewhere and your database is sitting in some other regions you have 100 gigs of internet uh, to you know uh, for you throughput uh, 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 for a good connection connectivity between your application which is running on ec2 and a database which is running on uh, um, an rds or aurora and sitting in any other particular region and uh, it's yes it's largest and most flexible global footprint and even if you if you're sitting in some village you can actually go and ahead and provision your aws resource so with this we can go back to the article and uh, uh, about our and let's see and uh, we have we have read about local uh, local region and edge locations are uh, very similar to pops and uh, yes uh, there is other thing like uh, i wanted to go quickly and show you on uh, uh, show you on the page as well the ui and before that i think there's something called as lambda edge services also so uh, lambda edge services are sort of uh, very similar services like cloudfront which uh, gives you the service uh, nearby the user's presence or uh, like point of presence and uh, so what it does is like it gives us computing capability the serverless computing capability nearby users wherever they are available like you define the uh, define the AWS location closest to your end, end, end user and uh, the processing of all of this particular uh, so so lambda lambda is nothing but a serverless function where you don't have a server beneath that particular service you what you cannot do is like if you have a code a simple hello world code you you want to run and get a response when you when a user hits your particular page it will just gives an hello world response okay so those sort of code you can just directly dump onto the lambda or you can write into the lambda directly and then uh, wherever your user is that if your user is sitting in EMEA or other regions you can define that um, uh, on this particular service like you know my user is sitting there and you can serve there the processing can be done there in that particular location uh, that is what is lambda at edge and that is a very new feature and probably I don't see other competitor uh, or have not uh, uh, you know bought up that particular service as, as a my idea and uh, let's go ahead and uh, take a quick look on the aws console and uh, aws console if you take a look i have selected mumbai region and uh, so mumbai has only one particular available uh, like uh, one particular location which is mumbai and uh, so these are all the regions and uh, i have only mumbai location as uh, in that particular region and apart from that us has uh, four regions and uh, north version is a default one whenever you select and uh, if with the EMEA, I think Frankfurt is the default region, but uh, it would, uh, you know, if you choose the EMEA region, it would get selected. And uh, so there's a difference between AWS and Azure in here and the, in the portal is like, uh, uh, so Azure, uh, while creating resources, it asks you uh, the location. Okay, so that is sort of redundant, uh, uh, you know, thing. Uh, but again, with AWS, what it happens is like, uh, you have a location you need to select first. So according to the location, if the services are available, like EC2 services available for that particular mobile location or not, uh, you can see them. Otherwise, you can't see them. So that is one good thing where it's abstracting from the user. Like if the service is available, then only you can consume. Otherwise, you can't. Okay, with this, I think we have crossed uh, 10 minutes. I uh, hope I would make uh, the other particular recordings uh, within 10 minutes. And uh, let's go ahead with the other particular services. Thank you. Let's meet on the other recording. Let's meet on the next section. Thank you.